Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Microsoft Project Made Easy. In this episode, we're going to be looking at five things that we should troubleshoot when we're developing a schedule in Microsoft Project. I have a series of videos on my playlist and on my YouTube channel. And so if you haven't seen any or you're just starting out with Microsoft Project, you can check out my playlist, subscribe to my channel, and you'll see a whole host of uh, videos right from start through uh, to a lot of areas. And I think that's a good place if you're just starting. But as I said, in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the basic fundamental things that we should troubleshoot in a schedule. These are just some of them. There's a lot of them that I could do this on, but I thought I'd start with something here. All right, so if you have a project and whatever the project is, we've developed a work breakdown structure over here. So we've got different levels to our project. And me being a professor of construction management, of course, this is construction based, but a lot of these points, it won't matter what type of schedule that you're reviewing it from. The good thing is we can review the work breakdown structure at the different levels. If we go to the view tab, we can click on outline and then we can look at it from different levels. So like level two, this is the main categories of work, pre-construction, construction, close out. And then I got a final milestone listed over here. This is good because at the different levels, if you've developed the schedule, you, you know, if your project, if you have a lot of experience with your, this type of project, you might have a good sense of what these durations should be. And if something seems out of whack, that can give you sort of the impetus to go looking deeper. So it's not bad to be able to review it at that level and just see, does this make sense? You can of course then go down to the next level, which would be level three. And then again, you might be looking under the construction heading in this particular case, and then you can dig down further. Does this make sense for site mobilization? Does this make sense for substructure? And so on. If something seems out of whack, it's giving you a signal that your duration, something might not quite make sense. And so if building systems rough ends at 17 days doesn't make sense, then you can start looking at these various activities in more details. So they're kind of like little check marks and flags that you can review to make sure that this makes sense for this type of project for these durations. Uh, and of course, if you want everything to be open under the outline view, you can go all subtasks and then that opens everything up, which at certain points, that's what you want to have done too. The other thing that I've said before in other videos is we want to make sure that we don't have any open ends. We want to make sure that everything is connected. Now we could look at our project schedule and we could take a look and see if we see anything that might be open. And I'm seeing a few things. But the other thing too is I probably would like to see the critical path when I'm looking at this. And so I'm gonna just turn on the critical path by going to format, critical task, and then it shows me the critical task. And I'm seeing this thing is really sort of standing out here. And it's not connected to anything. So that's an open end. We don't wanna have that kind of stuff going on. Uh, the other thing that we can also look at is as we go along, we can go down, can look, oh, okay, I see another one there. Now, I'm pretty good at looking at this stuff. Not everybody is, and sometimes it can be deceiving in this view. So another thing that you should also do is you should check to make sure that all the predecessors, everything has a predecessor except the first activity, right? Now you don't want to connect to your summary task. That kind of gives different kinds of conflicts. Uh, so you really should be linking activities to activities, not activities to summary tasks. And these ones don't always jump out at you in this view. But first, let's take a look and see if we see any open ends anywhere other than the way I just did it. So I'm just going to click this down arrow. I'm going to click select all and then I'm gonna click blank. So what I'm asking it to do is to filter out and just show the blank cells here, right? And so under predecessors, the only one that I see listed under predecessors uh, is letter of intent, right? And that's the first activity. So it shouldn't have a predecessor. So that's not a problem. 
So I'm going to unfilter that. And remember, if you filter it, you got to remember how to unfilter it or you will be driving yourself up the walls. You don't want that to happen. So I'm going to click uh, select all and then click all. Then everything's back. Well, it's not only about predecessors, it's also about successors. So I'm going to click on this column, right click my mouse, and then I'm going to type S um, for successors, right? And so when I type S for successors, there it is. I click on that. And so now I'm going to filter this for just the blank ones. And let's see what comes up there. So I'll click check that blank box. And there we go. Um, so that's where I'm getting a little bit more action here. I'm seeing that this one and this one are uh, are um, open. So if I go slide along here, let's see what's going on there. There it is. Um, so I'm seeing that we are uh, missing links um, to the successor on this one and the successor on that one, right? So the, those two. So I could mark that down, number six and number uh, 33, and that would give me a clue as to what's going on. Of course, the last uh, one, this milestone, doesn't have a successor either, but that's okay. It's at the end of the project. And if I wanted to even filter out the headings that I didn't want to look at the headings for now, I could just click that, and then it just bring um, the activities that don't have successors into my viewpoint. I can shrink that down so I can see all three of them for the whole project listed. Remember though, if you turn things on and off, uh, if you wanna bring them back, you have to turn them back on. And I have to release this filter here. So I select all, click blank. So now I'm gonna look at then fixing these particular items. So I would go about, you know, thinking about, well, what does tendering and procurement need to link to? And maybe I want to link it to clear site and grubbing. So that's number 15. So I'm going to type in number 15 there. And that's going to watch what happens because I think that's going to be on the critical path now. That's changed my dates. That's why that's showing in a different color there. So that's another flag or warning to say, hey, whatever you just did, it changed all these dates. Are you okay with that? So that's always good to pay attention when you see things light up like that um, for those uh, particular reasons. Now, the other one was the water supply, number 33, and uh, rough in connection. And so then I have to say to myself, well, what did I want um, that one to connect to? And maybe I want that one to connect to number 29 as well. So I'm just going to put a uh, successor for that one at 29 and that's also done some changes. I think it changed overall. So that impacted the critical path as well. So you have those kind of changes that have taken place. And I've got a certain amount of, if I pull this along over here and make it a little bit more bigger so that we can see that. So we've got by the days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Ah, that's a little bit wide. I don't like it when it's that wide. I'm going to scrunch it down a little bit. I usually scrunch it down to about 55%. That way I can fit more weeks in what I see. So you just double click there for the time scale. Another little tip that can be quite helpful for you. And I'm just going to click on this. Another little tip if you're in the task view, you can scroll to task and find that information directly very quickly. So you notice here there's a lot of stuff going on. It's kind of up and down, uh, not very linear. And then you see this too, it's up and down. It's not too uh, linear. Perhaps you would like to review this schedule. You wanna see, does this thing make sense in the order that we want to construct it? And sometimes it's a little bit difficult to follow when everything is sort of backwards and forwards. This isn't too bad because it's all kind of linear. If we'd like the whole project to look that way, what I would suggest you do for a period of time, we wanna keep these headings with our work breakdown structure organized, but if we wanna sort of see it from start to finish, then what we should really do is we should sort of hide those summary tasks, like we I said, so go to format, let them disappear, and then you should say, I wanna see this project from start to finish. Sort earliest to latest. 
And so what it's done now is it's sorted the whole project from earliest to latest. So now it's going to follow it very sequentially, which makes it easier for you to review your schedule. So this is a good troubleshooting exercise because you should be following along and say, all right, so these are go activities going to start here. This is going to be the successor activity. So when we finish these, this is what's next. And you're looking at the activities and you're looking at what they say and you're following all the way through your entire schedule because everything is sequential when you've got it listed that way. And that's very helpful because if you made a mistake with one of the links, you can catch that and review that, discuss it and think about that. And it's also good as a communication tool for all of your trades that are going to be doing work on the project. So uh, you got to remember that you did that though, because you probably don't want to have it every day sort of structured like that. That's why the work breakdown structure is um, helpful from that perspective. Because you notice that these IDs at the left, they're all over the map. You got 49, you got 88, you got 59, you got 50. That's because we've sorted it chronologically or linearly um, based on the schedule dates which is great, but I'm done with that and I'd like to see it again the way I had it. So then what I would do is I would just go view, sort by ID number. And now the ID numbers are all sequential and then I would put format, summary tasks. And so now all my summary tasks are back in my schedule as well, right? So that's a good way of looking at it. And not only by the way, would I have looked at it from the beginning to the end? I would have looked at it from the end to the beginning. So you work your way from the end and you work your way backwards to the beginning. This is something that is really being used a lot in lean construction when we actually map out a milestone. We actually do what we call pull planning and we work it from the milestone date back to our start date which is very helpful because now you're looking at things pulling to the activities. You know, what, what does this activity need to have done for it to start, right? So what are uh, um, the gives and the gets? What do I need to get? And what is that trade giving me? And making sure there's good communication going on between that to make sure that this nice schedule that you're working on actually makes sense. Uh, from that perspective. So we've got uh, that aspect and we've looked at the forward and backward pass. It's also not a bad thing. You can filter the information to just show you the critical path. So you can go to view because the critical path is the longest path through the project. So if you're new to project management, this is the longest path in the network through the project. These items that are in blue, they have float. So some activities have float. That means they've got some flexibility before they turn red. And so it's good to do a review. Do these activities that are critical make sense? Again, looking at the your project in different ways once you've mapped it out, it can sort of, you can sort of highlight and spot potential problems that may occur. So, you know, if I go again to view, I can filter and I can say, just show me the critical activities, get rid of the blue ones. And then I see just the critical activities listed. And I could do the same thing. I could orchestrate this, make the summary task disappear, put it from earliest to latest and just follow along. And is there anything that should be here that's not here? Does this make sense? Uh, and that could be helpful as well. So I'm going to say no filter. Um, you could also group the activities, right? So you could group the activities. So if you go critical, you've got the ones that aren't critical listed here, right? So if I actually um, slide along uh, wherever these ones are, these are all the non-critical activities. So if there's something there that you're thinking, it's got to be critical. That's not making sense. Again, it's another way of you just sort of getting that that good sense of, well, it should be in this area, the critical activities. So it's just grouping critical activities and non-critical activities. And of course, if you've done that and you don't want it anymore, you can say no group and you're back to square one with that. Okay, so we've kind of 
covered off the aspect of looking at the CPM, filtering for it. I think the other thing that I didn't show you is the network diagram. If you slide to the left and you right click your mouse, the network diagram, this is often forgotten by people. You'll see in the network diagram here, you'll see all these parallelograms. So one of the things I would look at in this sort of analysis is I would be looking across and I would be looking through here and you see there, there's a parallelogram. That is representative of a summary task. You know what, I've said it before, I don't wanna have summary tasks linked. So I don't wanna have summary tasks linked. They should be off to the side. We should link activities to activities. It kind of causes some problems with our updating and our schedule when we're linking to summary tasks. We're not thinking we finish this and we start this whole area of work. We're thinking we finish this and we start the first activity within that area of work. So I'm gonna take a quick look again and I'm going to see what this summary task is by hovering over it, slab on grade. I'm gonna go back to my Gantt chart and I'm gonna scroll down till I see slab on grade. And I see I've got a predecessor there and look, in this case, I've got uh, a link coming down to the summary task and to the first task. Well, why would I need that, right? Well, then you might say, well, I'll get rid of it on the first task. Yeah, but I want to link it to the first task. I don't want to link it to the heading, right? Something may change in how we have our links and different things like that. So a lot of reasons why. So I was correct to have that link there, but I was not correct to have that. So I just remove it. And then that resolves that issue. So it's good to do these reviews to better organize your schedule to make sure that what you've listed makes sense, to make sure that your overall durations for the different headings make sense, and to dive deep, to run through your project from beginning to end and from the end backwards. I know so many people, they never do it from the end backwards, but it's worth the time and effort. Have you ever written an email to somebody and then sort of really read it carefully? It's an important email and read it again and read it again. And then you send it off and you look at it on another day and you say, how did that typo get there? That's not what I intended. I, I checked it. I checked it three times. Well, you sometimes have to look at things from a different perspective or you sometimes have to get up and walk away and come back to it. So looking at a schedule from beginning to end, end and end to beginning, both ways, you're looking at it from two perspectives and you're much more likely to pick up on things that might be missed. It's also why rather than looking at individual days for these activities, does this overall duration make sense for this area of work? It may also jump something else out at you because it might seem long, it might seem short, and then you could look at your linkages and maybe it's not quite the way that you plan to execute the project. That can be great. Uh, following those practices and you can really pick up on things. Make the program work for you. You don't work for the program. So MS Project Made Easy will really kind of help you with these. And I hope you've enjoyed this uh, quick overview of some troubleshooting uh, techniques where we've looked at open ends, we've looked at summary tasks, we've looked at the critical path, review from start to end, and we've looked at durations. So I'm Tom Stevenson. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please click subscribe, help support the channel, click notifications and check out my playlist. If you're in the construction field, many, many videos on different topics and areas for you there. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.